This is Bremo, West Virginia, the town of millionaires. This tiny West Virginian town has a wild history. Imagine a place where coal barons built mansions and millionaires were as common as the coal they mined. Bremo earned its nickname as the millionaire's town for good reason. But it's not just the wealth that makes this place special. It's the people, the rich culture they created, and the amazing food that still tells their story today. We're diving deep into the legacy, the flavors, and the hidden treasures of this fascinating town. So stick around because Bremo has a lot to reveal. My man, how you doing? I'm great, I'm great. So what are we doing here today? Today we're gonna to look around the town of Bramble. We're gonna tell you guys a little bit about it, the history of Bramble, and how it really helped develop the American country. Yeah, it's a really interesting story. This is a town of millionaires during the turn of the 18 to 1900s, so right, right there. Right this street had 14 millionaires back then 100 million dollars basically and that's all from coal mostly from coal most developed from in other industries you know you're gonna have rail come out of that you're gonna have um of course you know dry goods farming communities things like that are going to develop here you know we had a lot of things other than coal coal was the start though coal's why the money was here to begin with wow so your house is uh, one of the younger, or the, the, the newest home, 1920s? 1923, the newest house on the block. <laughs> 101 years old, your house? Yeah, that's right. That's amazing. So each house here, because they're all historic, they're all gorgeous. Right. They're all date back to that era. Um, somewhere in there, somewhere. Usually, usually most of the, uh, the oldest one is around 1897, and the newest one's around you know, 1923 or so. And right here we have the bank, the old bank? Right, yeah, Bank of Bramwell. At one time, this is one of the richest banks in the country. That's incredible. It's a beautiful stone building. Yeah. And then over here, we have the old pharmacy, which still makes their own sodas and ice cream. Right. Sodas and ice cream. All right. One of the best hamburgers in West Virginia right there. Oh, yeah? Oh, definitely. Within walking distance of my house, it's great. Oh, my gosh. My are we having dinner now? There. So easy. Best town in the world. Oh, great. Let's yeah. go. Love this strip. Over 100 years old. I love it. Amazing. And right here, we have the corner shop soda fountain experience. Wow. Look at this place. Whoa, this is cool. It's, it's, it's a, got antiques, got comics. I guess we got some, some DC fans. Nah, I'm a Marvel guy. So right here we have a jukebox. If you guys don't know what this is, this is how they used to play music in the 50s. All those gen albums. Yeah, yeah, this is, look at this. Year of shipment, 18, 1988. Wow, so it's as old as me. And you got Elvis right here. Look at that beautiful Elvis Presley. John Wayne, the Duke, James Dean. Wow, this is like from the 50s. For all you kids out there, anybody born in 2000 till now, you don't even know what this is, right? So this is how we used to put cash. You know what cash is? It's not Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing, bro. And over here we have some old school memorabilia from like, look at that, this is just amazing. Oh, whoa, look at the phone. Oh, yeah. So we're gonna try some soda, and yeah. we also have ice cream that you guys make in house. We do. We make our ice cream, our whipped cream, our waffle cones. We make Ooh, it all. Make it all. Oh yeah. I love this. Have you ever seen Back to the Future? Yes. This feels like I'm there. Oh you know? yeah. It's like I just. Don't it's step different. Back in time. It's unique. Yeah. This is really amazing. And look at the phone, guys. I don't even know how you would use this. It's like Morse code. But no, you put that up to your ear and you speak in here. Hello, hello. Anybody there? Mm -hmm. Calling from you know from you Kansas. You're here and you speak in there. It's one of the two, actually. I never used one of these phones. And, uh, no, no, this is this is definitely. <laughs> but I think that's the earpiece, and yeah, that's. It just shows how fast we've changed. All the technology advances so quick. This is only a century ago. If only our grandparents could see that clip right there. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Soda syrup. Yep. So it's gotta let it settle a little bit. Yeah. It's amazing that this exists. I'm so happy about this. Thank you so much. Let's try this. I don't drink soda, but when I do, it's from the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good though. Is it root beer? It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Dude, it's it's very nice. The sparkle, um, it's not too too much. Oh yeah, I'm I strictly drink Dr Pepper, but I love our Coke. A lot of people come here for like our cherry Coke. Cherry Coke. Yeah. Yeah. So let's do a cherry Coke.
Amazing. Woo! You're in the spa, so. And that's cherry coke? Oh yeah, cherry likes to fizz a lot. I'm gonna try the cherry. Oh, that's nice. It's not as sweet as Coke. I feel like it's a little mm -hmm. less sweet. And in terms of um, the town, I mean, w what's happening here currently? Because I feel like it's, it's a tourism town, right? People are coming, as, like people come and visit. Oh yeah, so we have, um, in the summers in June and December, we have house tours, so they open up all the homes and you get to go in them. Um, in the summer, we have a lot of concerts down at the Trade Depot. The Trade Depot is a nice little museum, so they had a lot of coal coming in and out. I see a lot of ATV. I guess that is the tourism industry now. Yes, ATV ATVs tours, has taken over trails. a lot. Um, we blew up, personally, through ATVs. Of course. Um, all of, like, blew on everything. They're restoring, like, all of old buildings to have, like, AT resorts and, like, rentals and everything. So it has brought back a lot of life to our town here. Um, we personally thrive off ATVs, especially during the summer. And what do you love about Appalachia, the Appalachian culture? Um, personally, I just like West Virginia itself, like how it's built. I love the mountains. Um, fall here is really pretty if you guys have never been here. Just don't come in the winter. No, no, the snow's awful. You still need to get some ice cream. Yeah, yeah. we have all of these flavors on the board and you're welcome to sample any. Uh, cotton candy. Weirdly, I've been, I like cotton candy uh, ice cream. Oh it's God. sweet. It's sweet. How do you recommend it? In the cone, the waffle? Our waffle cones, yes. Yeah, so you make the waffle cones, make the ice cream. We make our whipped cream. You should try that vanilla then, it's the classic. Vanilla, I'll try your vanilla. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it's a, it's a good judge to like, you know. I don't know, Reese's too, the Reese's, you see? Yeah, you gotta go with a plain flavor though. I ain't playing. <laughs> God, it's amazing. I'm gonna give you all a couple of my favorites. Well, you have no idea. It's, it's nice and creamy. It's like amazingly whipped. This is apple pie. This is my favorite. Apple pie right here. She's giving me so many that I don't even know how I'm gonna have the actual <laughs> ice cream. There's a world as well. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. It's really apple pie. In ice like cream cookies. Form. Mm. Yeah, it has pie crust in it. Oh, amazing! Delicious. This is cherry cheesecake. Cherry cheesecake. <laughs> Do what she said. Too much. Too much. Too much. You have to eat every bite, bro. Every bite. After having biscuits at Tudor's. <laughs> oh, I love Tudor's. Mmm. That's good. Now pie is the best though so far. Yeah, it's a fan favorite. And this is lemon. This is my favorite summer flavor. Favorite summer flavor. No, apple pie. Okay. All right, so here we go. We're gonna have ice cream. So I'm going with the- uh, Apple pie. Apple pie. Wow. Do you want just a single scoop since? Yeah, two scoops is good. Okay. We're so gonna put some whipped cream on top. Do you want whipped cream? Yeah, I mean, if you guys make the whipped cream, for sure. Oh yeah. We go. Look at that. <laughs> this takes me back to my childhood. I used to grow up this going. You know? Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. It's the best. Right, let me jump jump in here somewhere. Fast until it. Mm hmm. Mm. The combo. I love this. With the cone. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. It's so good. So don't forget to come here for this. Um, so we're open Monday through Saturday. We're closed on Sundays. Um, probably Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays are our busiest days. Wow. So you sell a lot of ice cream? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah people love ice cream, especially the trail riders where it is all homemade and it's different flavors from like normal places. Um, rain or shine, they want that ice cream. They want that ice cream. Yeah. Well, I want this ice cream. Mm. It smells so good in here. It's also that, I think. Is that caramel? Butterscotch. Ooh. Wanna throw a little drizzle on here? Butterscotch? Yes. Woo! You put a lot. Mm. Oh my gosh. 
I love my job. <laughs> hey, you're the best. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Take care. You as well. All right, let's go. Let's go. Got my comics. Look at that. Mephisto, Micronauts. Got Nightcrawler. X Men '97, bro. You're missing out. You guys have a good day. You too. Take care. Hi. Right. She's great. Man. It's amazing. Yeah, like I said, you know, it's coming back this way. Yeah. There's like signs that say you can't ride down the street. Yeah, yeah, of course, because it's but too much ATV culture now. It is. Yeah, well, because if you tell them not to and you would enforce that, you lose your economy here. Yeah, yeah. But these are huge ATVs, so if you're coming here, you have to get a big ATV like that. Yeah. yeah. The small ones don't work here. So I heard you guys have some good pizza rolls over there. Oh yeah, we pepperoni actually, rolls. We okay. actually have pepperoni rolls in this bakery that I work at. She makes them homemade every day. And we have a few in the bakery if you guys would like to try some. Hey, pepperoni roll? She has, she has. Yeah, we have pepperoni rolls. Oh my gosh, it's yeah. so funny. Ah. So you're from right here? Um, I'm from a town called Montcom. It's about 10 minutes away from here. It's a real small town. Like if yeah. you blink, you're gonna drive through it. You're gonna miss it. The area in the past few years has changed a lot due to like the side-by-sides and the ATV riders. Um, it's brought a lot more people into this area. So it's actually been very good for this area. But mm -hmm. now they're like, they're everywhere. They're everywhere, dude. It's so crazy. And every day, like you wake up, you hear like, all kinds of side by sides go by and I live right off the road so it sounds like a rocket ship taking off like every day it's crazy oh, man. so in a way it's it's brought economy it's bringing yeah. tourism but then it's creating sound pollution early mornings because yes, they yes. told me here too like they'll go down up and down the street and it'd be like yes. they're down all of the time and it doesn't I think the trails have like a what is it called the uh, uh like a curfew kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So like, you won't hear anything from like 11 to like 6 a.m. But then after 6 a.m., you're like, you can't get into the gas stations. You can't go to Geno's, like Tudor's. Like it is so busy all of the time. That's good. It good is. You guys. It's awesome. It's well, awesome. Let's see the pepperoni roll. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> so the Honeycomb Cafe has some of the best pepperoni rolls in West Virginia and for sure here in this town. So let's go. Hey, guys. Hey. How you doing? Good. How are you doing? Very good. We hear you have the best pepperoni rolls. Yes. That's what you said. <laughs> All right, so I'll take one. Hey, I'm David, by the way. Hey, Blake. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. All right, so one pepperoni roll. You sold me on it. I sold you on it because they're the best. All right, here we go. Pepperoni roll. Ooh. Super nice fluffy bread. Look at this. Wow. Oh man, you smell, you smell, it smells so good. Mm -hmm. And this is baked right here in the back. And they recommended that we get it with sauce. So what's like a tomato sauce? Mm -hmm. like a salsa? So we just drop it? Uh, you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna drop it right there. Just dip it. Beautiful. I would do a bite without first. And yeah, with. let's do it. I'll grab this one. All right, let's do it. Oh man, pot is amazing. Mm -hmm. That bread is super good because it's not super dense bread. Yeah, uh, it's super fluffy. Mm -hmm. Fluffy, airy, love the cheese throughout. And it's so hot. It is so hot. Well, now I'm gonna get some of the tomato sauce. You want some? Yeah. Right there, like that. Oh man, you know what? That cold mixture of the mm -hmm. sauce with the hot, mmm. Great contrast. I can't get over how good these are, Jesus Lord. I know, these are these are probably the best we've had so oh far, God, right? These are so good. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say, you know what's funny? It's hard to say, obviously everybody has their individual preferences. It's hard to say what the best is because they all bring a unique thing. You know, you might be feeling a little bit more dense, a little more crunchier bread. Mm -hmm. You might be feeling the softer, fluffier bread. So it really kind of depends on what your mood that day is. Yeah. Because you can get multiple different kinds. And that's the other thing too. They're all made differently. Yeah. And that's what makes them special. I think what makes this one special is that we have it heated up. Oh yeah. Oh man. That is such good bread. Pepperoni rolls are amazing. Umami. Mm -hmm. It's like hot versus cold pizza. No, dude, of course. Well, comments below. Let us so know. You know what? I, I like my pizza cold the next day pizza. I do too. I love that. Mm, I love it. 
Hey guys, thank you so much. Thank you guys for coming in today. Thank you, we appreciate it. Oh yeah, thank you guys. We'll see you next time. So the Honeycomb. The Honeycomb, honeycomb Cafe. Cafe. Mm -hmm. Love this small town feel, guys. It's so homey. People are so friendly. So what can we see around here now? Oh, you know what? If you want to peek down the street, I'll show you the uh, our train depot. Okay. Let's go. Oh, this green building, yeah, I yeah, saw this. Right down here at the end of the street was the train depot. Um, you had a direct window from here to Grand Central Station in New York. You could get on a train right here, no stops, go straight to Grand Central Station. Grand Central Station had a window that said Bramble, West Virginia. They were that, they, these people were that loaded. You no, know, you had the main line running back and forth between here and No here. way. Yeah. Um, and what's that house there? It's, I, I saw that like on Google yeah, Maps. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's the Cooper's house. Yeah. The Cooper house, yeah. Now John Cooper, he was one of the original coal operators. Um, that house is built out of bricks that were each individually imported from Europe. <laughs> wow. So all the red orange bricks you see there, they weren't made here, they were made in Europe and shipped over here to build that house. The roof's 100% copper and insured for who knows how much money. The house itself has its own trust fund and the original family built a house still lives there. That's incredible. Yeah. If my house looked like that, I probably would say yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's amazing, it's amazing. Now they're very private about their house, which I don't blame them, you know. Yeah. Some people are, some people aren't, but they're, they're very private about it. And I got the opportunity to go in there one time and it was amazing. Yeah. Super goth inside, loved it, unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. It's like a piece of history. Yeah, it looks just it's... like it did when her great grandfather owned it. It's amazing. Wow. Yeah. So where else can we walk to? I mean, is, is there anything open at this? Oh yeah, we've just... got, yeah, mostly this was storefronts back in the day. You had, um, there was a grocery store up there. You had furniture stores, jewelry stores, things like that. Um, right now we've got a great um, breakfast area right here. Honeycomb Cafe, excellent, excellent pastries. Um, they do great coffees. They've got a great coffee machine. Um, a few buildings up there. You've got the post office. Then we've got the uh, Mexican restaurant there, Casa Familia. It's great. Yeah, she was a local girl. Her mother uh, lives up on a hill here. She, her mother was mayor back in the day. Wow. Um, now she owns her own restaurant down here. She does her Mexican restaurant. Great food. Amazing. Great food, yeah. You're born, you're born and raised in Appalachia? Or? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, come from, I, I was born in Bluefield, so not far off. Yeah, I moved here probably 15 years ago down to Bramble. Nice. Yeah. How, how has it changed over the years? I mean, since you grew up, I feel like it must be a different place, you know, or is it not? Bramble hasn't changed a lot. The only change here in Bramble is the huge ATV boom, which... You know, some days it's great. You know, four o'clock in the morning, it's not so good when you got 10 or 12 guys rolling down the street, you know, on these ATVs. Oh my God. Yeah, it kind of blows the whole vibe, you know? So. I know, I know. <laughs> so in terms of living here, just very quiet, relaxing. Mostly laid back, yeah. Mostly laid back. Yeah, mostly laid back. Yeah. During the week, it's real nice. Weekends, it gets a little busier. You know, it's kind of a touristy town now. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is one of the prettier towns that we've seen in terms of like a real historical center. Right, right. You know? Yeah, it's, it's been it's been well kept. I mean, the people that have lived here over the years really concentrated on keeping the originality and keeping the historic um, things in perspective. What's one thing you love about Appalachia? Appalachia. Um, the freedom. Appalachia. The freedom is where it's at here, you know. Yeah. It's not the Wild West, you know, you still got laws, but you can do what you want to do, yeah. When we go on the internet and we search about Appalachia, sometimes I think it gets a bad rap, you know, right. it's like, pour this, pour that, and obviously this is completely contradictory to that. Right. Do you, what are your feelings on that? Do you think it's like an unfair thing? Do you think this... No, like, it's yeah. not It's not unfair at all. That's that's a, a huge actuality around here. If you get in some of the outskirts of uh, some of the... It's not metropolitan here by any means, but if you get away from some, some of the, the towns with a larger scale of people in it. You still have people back in the woods, like say, this is Bramble Hill back here. Those people didn't have running water, running city water till about six years ago. They would actually haul water to their house, put it in a cistern, catch rainwater, whatever they had to do to get water back in those days. And there's still some fine homes up there. They just didn't have water, you know? Well, I think mountains. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got, you know, there's tons of people that live way up in hollers, what we call them, you know, way out dirt roads and things. There's still tons of people out there that live like that. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Hollers. Yeah. A holler is basically a valley or a a street or a, a dirt road that goes back into the woods, sort of like down, mostly in a valley. You want to consider it kind of a valley, is what we call a holler. Of course, most people call them hollows, but here they're hollers, of course. Yeah. So without this town, there was no skyscrapers. Exactly. Back in the old days, you had to have what a process of coal called coke. It was coal that was cooked down to only carbon. And they would use that carbon. They would heat the carbon, and the carbon would get hot enough to melt steel and process steel. So most of the coal from here in Pennsylvania went straight to the steel mills in Pennsylvania. They built, made the steel there, and they took it on to New York City to build the New York City skyline, as, as you see it now. Wouldn't have been able, you know, couldn't have been done without the coal.
This is what this area is about. ATVs. Yeah. Wild. Big ATV guy. Yeah, I love ATVs. Wow. Yeah, you know, do it during the daytime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not during the night. So this is the historical train station. From here to Grand Central Stra Station to Grand in the 1920s. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I could I could have lived here and then just got on a train and gone to New York. Yep. It's amazing. It's amazing. This is one of the old dining trains, still real, still here. Obviously, they haven't restored the inside, but the outside is awesome. It's like flying private, straight up. That's like what it is. Wow, thank you. This is great. And right here, we have the town hall. It was incorporated in 1888 and then later listed into the National Registry of Historical Places in 1983. Look at this. This is a hundred and uh, whatever, 130, 140 years old. It's incredible. Still here. Town Hall. You like hot sauce? Thank you. This is from me. This is America. This is America. Yeah. Thank, you, thank you. This is America. America. We are hot America. <laughs> Hey, you thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate it. We'll Better be back problem. tomorrow. Tomorrow we're coming back. We're going to the, the soda... Right. Corner shop. Corner shop. The corner shop. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Thank All you. All right, guys. Good to meet you. All right, let's go. Good to meet you.